In this world we live, matter has everything to do with our daily lives. All the nature around us is filled with unknown features. From thousands of years ago to today, people have worked to figure out how everything works. Starting with astronomy, they have managed to get it far enough to have fields such as electromagnetism and quantum fields. This science, which has helped us to progress through the history, is called physics. Classic physics, which we usually know from the Newton's laws, help help us to understand all the motion and energy interactions that we can see with our eyes. As scientists started to look deeper into molecules and Armstrong sized matter, the rules of classic physics started not to explain what was happening. The interactions and movements were so weird that these classic physicists nearly got to the point of giving up. With the new generations of 90s came the modern physicists such as Albert Einstein, Max Planck, Niels Bohr, Mary Curie, Paul Dirac, and Erwin Schrödinger. They have worked on what we call the quantum theory, theory of relativity and such, which are not even hard to figure out, but even to understand. Starting from 1895, Nobel Prizes were given to those who have made great contribution to their fields in physics, chemistry, psychology or medicine, literature and peace. In all of these branches, the award winners have made our lives easier, healthier and better. Especially in physics lately, technology has grew a lot with the quantum theory. Every tool that we use now is a part of the technology we have, and the transformation of information has only been possible with our knowledge on electrons. The works on quantum theory has led to this extraordinary development, even though we have many unresolved problems in coherencible situations. When we see how our knowledge and our control on nature has evolved, we wonder how people have discovered, progressed, contributed more than us, advanced in things we don't even seem to understand. Now, we shall try to generate a perspective to the works of a very important quantum field scientist, Erwin Schrödinger. He has taken a role in explaining the nature in many phenomena at the atomic and subatomic level, also has a very known explanation to one of them, which we know as Schrödinger's cat. He had also won a Nobel Prize in 1933. Him and many more scientists are very specific with their work. We must try to understand and resolve their studies, then maybe we shall get a point of view on life which evolves around us. Erwin Rudolf Joseph Alexander Schrödinger is the son of Rudolf and George and Amelia Brenda Schrödinger and was born on April 12, 1887 in Vienna's third district, Erdberg. Both sides of the family share an interest in the natural sciences. Erwin spends a sheltered childhood and receives education by private tutors at home until he enters the Imperial Royal Academic High School. He remains an outstanding student through his school career. On July 11, 1906, he graduates with honors and receives a certificate to attend any university. In fall of 1906, Erwin Schrödinger begins his studies in the physics at the Department of Physics of the University of Vienna, located in Turkenstadt II. After his graduation with a PhD on May 20, 1910, there is no longer any reason to postpone the annoying year-long military service. On October 1, 1919, Schrodinger takes up his first post with Professor Eckner, for whom he works as a research assistant for the next couple years. Schrodinger starts out with experimental work, but soon realizes that he is not suited as an experimenter. In April of 1913, he submits an article to be admitted to the faculty. His tenure becomes effective on January 19, 1914. 
On July 28, 1914, Austria-Hungary declares war on Serbia and Schrodinger is called up only three days later. On July 26, 1915, Schrodinger's unit is transferred to Gorizia, where the second battle of Izonzo is drawing to an end. Later, Irvins is moved to an ambush position near, the, near Prozeka. In this quieter environment, he studies Einstein's new theories for the first time, but only slowly comes to appreciate these ideas. By the end of the war, he is back in Vienna, which he regards as a great advantage because I was not affected by the disastrous backflow of that freight front line. Along with the general war problems, Schrodinger faced personal problems too. Her, both parents are suffering from chronic alignments and their financial situation is tight. Due to the collapse of Austrian Hungarian monarchy and the subsequently reduced number of universities and colleges, the changes for employment are rather bleak. So, Schrodinger accepts an offer from the University of Jena and leaves Vienna. Prior to his move to Jena, Irvin marries Anna Marie Bertel on April, April 6, 1920. At the end of the September, the unpaid professor announces that starting on the 1st of next month, he has received and accepted an offer from the Technical University in Stuttgart to be salaried associate professor of theoretical physics. Since negotiations with the University of Vienna during Christmas 1920 have failed, the Schrodinger's move to Breslau at the beginning of the summer term 1921 with Irwin acting as ordinary professor in theoretical physics paid out special funds. Although Schrodinger is very happy with his position and environment, he still writes to Stefan Mayer in Vienna on July 12, 1921. Now listen, I will probably not stay in Breslau, but move, it, move on to Zurich to the university there. Erwin Schrödinger's decision to move to Zurich is quite understandable. Switzerland is understructed by war, pays good salaries, and Erwin knows how to rise to the fame of his two predecessors in this position, Albert Einstein and Max von Love. Having overcome health problems, the young scientist Schrödinger becomes very active in publishing. In the course of 1926, having summoned up all his energies and inspired by the Broglier's work, Erwin Schrödinger is able to create a new theory of mechanics. This theory of mechanics is capable of explaining the activities inside atoms. The theory is published in four successive issues of Annals of Physics as quantization as an eigenvalue problem. Physicists all over the world are impressed by Schrodinger's work on quantum mechanics. As a result, he is invited to hold guest lectures at major universities and is called to Humboldt University in Berlin to take over the chair for theoretical physics, which became available after Max Planck resigned. Although Schrodinger is quite happy in Switzerland, and both university administration and the students try hard to persuade him to stay, he decides to follow the call to Berlin. Glenn's meditation plays a role in this when he personally intervenes with Schrodinger to consider the change. Berlin in 1927 is at home to a number of important physicists such as Albert Einstein, Max von Laue, Isaac Meitner and Otto Hahn. In this atmosphere, Erwin feels at home scientifically as well as personally, but the threatening political developments cause discomfort for the free thinker he is. Though not yet personally affected by the new laws and regulations, concerns about his friends and his own future. Consequently, in 1933, he accepts a temporary position as fellow at Magdalen College at the University of Oxford, where he gives lectures on quantum mechanics and participates in the deep debate of interpretation of quantum theory. On November 9, 1933, at 9 p.m., Anna Mary Schrodinger is called to the telephone at a small Oxford hotel. It's the London Times telling her that her husband is among the Nobel Prize winners of that year. On 
December 10, the anniversary of Alfred Nobel's death, the 1933 Nobel Prize for Physics is awarded to Erwin Schrödinger and Paul Adrian Morris Dirac in Stockholm. In this speech, the chairman of the Nobel Committee for Physics explains why the Nobel Prize has been awarded to Schrödinger. Through a study of the wave properties of matter, you have succeeded in establishing a new system of mechanics which also holds good for the motion within the atoms and molecules. With the aid of this so-called wave mechanics, you have found the solution to a number of problems in at atomic physics. Your theory provides a simple and convenient method for the study of the properties of atoms and molecules under various external conditions and it has become a great aid to the development of physics. Erwin Schrödinger spent Christmas of 1935 in Austria. At the beginning of the 1936-37 winter term, he leaves Oxford and accepts a position as professor for theoretical physics in Graz. After the German troops march into Austria, Schrödinger's personal life becomes more and more unbearable. His home is searched and he is interrogated several times. His liberal political opinion is well known to the new rulers. Disguised as tourists, Annie and Erwin Schrödinger leave Austria with just a small suitcase. They return to Oxford via Italy and Switzerland and eventually accept an invitation to the University of Ghent. Prime Minister of Ireland and a former math mission sees the opportunity to further scientific development in his country. He establishes an institute for advanced studies for his department for theoretical physics is tailored to Schrödinger. So, he succeeds to bring the Nobel Prize winner to Ireland for the next 16 years. Under Schrödinger's influence, Ireland becomes a center of research for theoretical physics. Leading physicists from all over the world are invited to meet with Irish scientists at summer schools. With such perfect working conditions, Schrödinger completes approximately 50 papers. Once more, he develops a deep passion for science, the case for unified field theory. One single theory that explains the phenomena of gravitation and electromagnetism simultaneously. Despite all his efforts over the years, the Nobel Prize winner is the pride of a final victory. In another field, Erwin Schrödinger has unexpected success. His book, What is Life?, which is based on a series of popular lectures, develops one of the most essential ideas of modern biology, the genetic code. With more than 100,000 copies, this publication becomes Schrödinger's most popular work. The famous scientist never loses contact with his home country. He spends the winter term of 1950 visiting the University of Ansbruck and he regularly participates in the U European Forum Altbach. In 1956, Erwin Schrödinger decides to return home to Austria for good. On April 13, 1956, he undertakes the chair established for him at the University of Vienna. As topic for his opening lecture, he chooses the crisis of the atomic concept. So many come to listen to his talk that even the largest auditorium of the university is too small to hold all interested. In the following semesters, Schrödinger gives lectures on the general theory of relativity and the evolution of the universe. In May 1916, symptoms of a dormant lung disease show again. Schrödinger undergoes through examinations in Vienna and in Augsburg. The diagnosis is tuberculosis due to age. He starts a rescue at his blood alpha, but does not have the strength to recover. On January 4, 1961, at 7 p.m., he dies with his wife Annie at his side. On January 9, he is laid to rest in Altbach, with numerous mourners giving him his last farewell and his old friend Haas turning, holding the funeral address. The large
Arch Great Schrödinger on the far side of the moon is named after him. The Erwin Schrödinger International Institute for Mathematical Physics was opened in Vienna in 1993. Schrödinger's portrait was the main feature of the design of the 1983-1997 Austrian thousand shilling banknote. A building is named after him at the University of Limerick, Ireland. Schrödinger's 126th birthday anniversary was celebrated with a Google Doodle. The philosophical issues raised by Schrödinger's cat are still debated today and remain his most permanent legacy in popular science, while Schrödinger's equation is his most constant legacy at a more technical level. To this day, Schrödinger is known as the father of quantum physics.